it's time to code. Today we are going to learn how to connect a NestJS 13 application with the app directory to a MongoDB database. We are going to use our portfolio app, our existing portfolio app that we've been working on to connect, uh, uh, to replace our local uh, JSON file data for uh, a MongoDB database which is a lot more secure, scalable, dynamic, and responsive. If you are new to this video or to my channel, don't worry. You don't need to have work in the existing uh, portfolio app. You can just go to GitHub. I leave the, um, the link in the description box below. Clone the project and take it from there, okay? You don't need to have the knowledge of what we've been doing before. Today, we're going to learn a lot, but we'll keep it short, simple, and fun. There might be some surprise along the way. Not sure. Let's see. Let's get started. First, we need to create a MongoDB account. I already created a MongoDB uh, account when I was preparing this project, so, but I screen record what I was doing. And uh, so I'm just gonna show you. First, you just go to the website, MongoDB, and then if you have an account, sign in. If you don't, try free. You click there, and my connection was quite slow at this point, so hold on. And uh, this will take you to the sign up screen. You just put here all your details, your email, and your password. And once you're done, you click on create your Atlas account. Okay, this will take you to a, a screen where they will tell you that you need to verify your email. You go to your email, you verify it, you click in the link, and then it will say that the email is successfully verified. And it will take you into this screen where you need to select your goal. If you are learning MongoDB or explore what I can build or so on, I selected learn MongoDB. Then here I just said I'm just exploring and my preferred language is JavaScript. Cool, and now it comes to the point of our database. You choose from these three tiers, uh, of course, free because we are only learning. And all of these options, you just leave us as it is, the provider and the region. And the name here, you can call it whatever you want. I'm going to call it portfolio app. And you can also create tags, but I just left it as empty. Um, you do this. Then you will take you to the screen where you can create your user. So you can connect to your database. Uh, and this user is what we are going to use in our, uh, what we are going to put in our um, file. We'll go over all of this. Uh, you can whitelist your IP. So here I'm adding my current IP to the to the whitelist. And once I'm done, I just finish and close. I click that button and my database is created and is deploying or is deployed. I think this is all you need to do for now. And uh, just one more thing. Here, if you click on connect, it's going to show you a different ways of how you can connect your application. So, for example, by a driver or by compass, a shell, a MongoDB for VS Code or Atlas SQL. Um, if you want, you can uh, use compass. You can install uh, this. Uh, I haven't done any of this. I just use the URL that the connection string that you have down below, but you can download the so you say like this part that I'm highlighting this is the string that we are going to use to connect to MongoDB as you can see uh, it has my username my password the cluster name and the the rest of the MongoDB um, URL okay so that is um, something that we need but I'm not going to install absolutely anything else I'm just going to work with the cloud first um, as I said, go to the GitHub link that I left in the description box below and uh, clone from this branch, video three final unit test. This is where we are going to take it from. By the end of this tutorial, I am going to push everything to this branch, video four final MongoDB 
uh, emails. I might change this name to messages, actually. Um, messages, so I might just remove this last part. Actually, let's do this now. Rename. It's as simple as this to rename a branch. Okay, let's start with the tutorial now. Let's start to code. Let me put myself here. Okay, first thing we are going to do is uh, run the project. So, yarn on npm, whatever you use, run dev. And we are getting this error they saying that we are not defining React in the layout. So let's just go to the layout and here I'm just going to import React from React. Cool. Now our app is working. Uh, and okay, so uh, first we are going to um, go to our API. API root and I'm going to create a new root file. So first I'm going to rename this one and now root.tx and basically we are going to completely replace the connection we have here um, this connection, we are connecting our API to our local the JSON data and uh, we are going to create a new connection to MongoDB. So all of this, uh, we probably don't need much of this, to be honest. Okay, so now that we have this new file and uh, before getting into any other details, I'm going to install a library called Mongoose. Yarn at Mongoose. So this library that we just installed, Mongoose, is um, a library that is going to allow us to connect with the database with MongoDB. You can use other libraries or you could even use uh, the MongoDB one this one uh, but what i like about mongoose is that it's a high level tool built on top of mongodb driver this provides us a, a abstraction layer for interacting with the database with the mongodb database and with mongo with mongoose you can define your documents using schemas and we'll look into that and provides a um, set of high level methods to query and manipulate the data it also provides some features like uh, validation or middlewares and it really allows you to define and run complex queries quite easily. Okay, so here now in root in here, this one, we are going to first let's import React from React. Oops. Okay, and I'm going to just copy what I have here. This, we are going to export an async post function, just like this one. But we also need the response, not only the request. So, response, next, yes, res what, next response. I'm going to change this to rec, so it's the same. Okay, let me make this smaller. And uh, here I'm going to import mongoose. So mongoose from mongoose. And the first thing I'm going to uh, declare is our Mongo URL, our Mongo URI, Mongo DV URI. And this Mongo DV URI is what I was showing you earlier, this URL here. I'm gonna copy this, come here and paste it. And just gonna replace this, the username, time to code, password, and the cluster portfolio app 
for um, I'm going to store all of this in um, environment variable. So to do that, just gonna copy this, delete it, and open brackets with dollar symbol. I'm gonna pass here the variable. So process dot m. Sorry, let me just replace this for an equal process dot m dot user. Um, let's say Mongo username and I'm going to do the same for password so password and portfolio app this should be cluster okay so this our environment variables. Uh, you could just leave the URL as it was all here, but if you want to have different users, uh, depending on the environment where you're working on, depending if it's a uh, development or production, this is a good way of doing it. Now, we need to create a file that is .cold.emb. And here in this file is where we need to specify our uh, variables. So Mongo username, and you put here your Mongo username and so on. Okay, we save this. And there is something else that we need to add to the NestJS configuration if we want to work with Mongoose. So otherwise your app is going to break. So go to nest.config and here uh, let's search for server components external packages. And uh, here we, um, we define an array and within this we just need to pass mongoose. Okay. Save this and let's come here. Okay, so this is our uh, URL. Now we uh, need to connect with uh, MongoDB. So I'm just going to define here a variable called client and I'm going to have a try catch block just to um, to catch any error that we might have if, if our connection with the database fails. So in client, I'm going to wait this because this is a promise and I'm just going to say mongoose.connect. I just pass here the mongodb urine. I'm going to log um something here database connected okay and in the cat i'm going to also log an error so uh, there was an, an error connecting to the database and now i log the error Okay, save. Okay, we define the URL and then we connect to the database using Mongoose. Okay, and uh, we also have two console log, just so we know if it's connected or if it was an error here. Uh, let's just save this first. Let's come to the page, click in send. Okay, I need to fill in something. Okay, let's see. Um, we get some errors, client, server, but okay, we get some errors here, that's fine, but the database is connected because we are not really returning anything uh, but we can see that the connection with the database is working okay okay let's um, get the data so uh, this is in the we are gonna do it in the same way as we did it in the previous video like this await for the request json let's just do it again await rec json and now we are going to structure our data. So name, email, company, message, equal data. Okay, and 
here we are going to have an if statement we are just going to add some validation to it so let's just say if there is no name or there is uh, no company or there is no message or um the message the email or there is not email okay and the email doesn't include oops doesn't include at um or uh, the message um message dot trim is equal to empty strings um or actually the name dot trim is equal to empty strings let me just see where i have an error here okay if all of this is a uh, full it all of this is true um yes sorry so if all of this is true then we want to throw an error right so I, i'll go through it in a second so nest response dot json and then here we open uh, curly brackets and we pass the message and this is gonna be invalid uh, input fill all the fields and we can also pass a status code so status and this is going to be a 42 okay so what we are doing here is and um, we want we, we are adding some validation so i think we have a few validations in the front but to make a really secure application your validation actually should come from the back because the front the client any user can actually interact with it uh, but they cannot interact with the backend right so here we are checking that uh, if we don't have a name or we don't have a company or a message or email or the email doesn't include an ad or the message once that we train it is equal to uh, empty uh, empty strings and the same with the name then if all of that is some of this condition is true uh, then we throw an error okay this is just a bit of validation uh, just a bonus that we are adding in this tutorial and uh, now and, and we return it okay so you're gonna we add this and now we want to return and now i'm gonna create a new variable called new data because i want to get the data that we have and add one more um, field which is date so new date like this and before I continue here, I want to create uh, a schema. So if you are familiar with uh, GraphQL, you might know what I'm talking. You you might it might be might be easier for you to understand what we are just about to do. But uh, either way, it's really easy and straightforward. I'm gonna come to my root file, root of the project, and create a folder called models or model models. Yeah and here i'm just gonna create a module called message.js and here is where i'm going to define my schema so the schema is a, a document where you define all your all the fields that you're gonna have and the types of them and let's import mongoose so const mongoose equal require mongoose and uh, now we can define the schema. So message schema. This is equal new mongoose dot schema. We all open brackets and curly brackets. And here is where we define all our fields. So name and the type of this field is string. Then uh, email and the type is string. Then company company and i think i removed one of the brackets company and this is also a string uh, next message 
also a string and then we can add date and this is a uh, type date and now we export this so module dot exports equal mongoose dot module and then message messages schema okay this is the way that we can export it and there is something else that we can do here so um if we don't want to our code to compile this module every single time we run it what we can do is add here mongoose dot models dot message or so what we are doing what we are exporting is mongoose.models.message or mongoose.model we are compiling this project so basically what this code will do is it will use the compile module if it's if it exists but if it doesn't exist it will compile this module cool now we can import this in our root file so import message from and we just need to navigate up to this folder and message and we come down here and we are gonna have another try and catch block and I'm gonna wait it because this is a promise so message dot create and we create a new model with um, um, we are gonna create a new entry in this uh, collection in this message collection that's how MongoDB is called it uh, so new data okay so uh, I'm gonna console log this uh, and it's gonna say message sent And if this goes good, then I'm going to uh, return um, a response, nest response.json message. And the message is gonna be message sent. And I'm going to also pass a status code, which is 201. But if there is an error, I'm also going to log the error. Uh, messages uh, couldn't messages didn't couldn't be sent. Sent, and I'm also going to uh, return a response. So nest response dot json message error sending the message status 500 um, i'm going to return this okay so let's save this um come to let's come to the database first so in my uh, let me just go back I had here open collection so I have here all the collections that I have from the, for this project and this is the one that we are working with messages As you can see I have loads of messages uh, at the moment I'm going to delete it yes let's just delete this completely drop and gonna come here and um, let's just give this a try and see if if our message actually is make its way through to the MongoDB all right and let's come here let's just say hey there how are you doing Actually, let's just reload the page and let's just let me run the, the project again because I think we made some changes in the EMS file. I'm not sure if I rerun the project. OK, 
Okay, and now I paste here my message, send message. Let's just come to database. Okay, email include is not a function. All right. Let's just see dot email include. Mm, okay, I'm missing an S here in the include. This should be includes. So if I save this, includes, and let's just try again, send message, let's just see, okay, now we have a different error, <laughs> but at least that passed, message couldn't be sent, okay, so all of this, all of this validation is all okay, but then at to this point, this is not going through. Let's just see why. So we're supporting it. Mongoose module message or Mongoose module message. This is schema. That's fine. Here we are importing it, but okay, we need to just import it like this. Yes. So if we just import it like this. Now we are importing the right file. Was, let me just show you the message, the error message. It was telling us that has no exported member. So we so just save it. Okay, let's just try again. Send message, come back, and a different error. Okay, <laughs> we are making progress. The database is connected, but message couldn't be sent. So there is an error here where pack imported module to create is not a function. Okay, so create is not a function. Message create. Make this a smaller. Message create new mongoose. Hmm. Hey. I hope you are enjoying the content so far and finding it valuable for your career. As you might know, producing these tutorials take a significant amount of time, effort and coffee. If you appreciate the content and wish to show your support, consider buying me a coffee. It's a small way to say thanks and helps keep me energized to continue creating quality content for you. Every cap counts and I truly appreciate your support. I leave the link down below and now let's continue with the tutorial. I found the issue and it's here for some reason is not liking this operator, the OR operator. So uh, if I replace this for the um, question question mark um, I think this should work so basically what this is doing is if this is false then this is a fallback right so then uh, we are going to compile the model before with the or it was like one thing or the other um, not quite accurate actually um, this would be the the right thing to say so only if this is false we will compile the module uh, so let's save this Oh my God, there is so much noise where I am at the moment. So I'm just gonna change to another microphone. Hopefully it's better. Okay, hopefully this make it better. Let me just test it. Okay, I think this should be better. Right, okay, cool. So I think this should work. So now if I save this and I come to the um, to the application and let me just reload this page send message message has been sent and if I go to the um, to the database refresh test message as you'll see here the message yes hey there how are you doing how exciting is that it's a really simple and straightforward to, way to connect your application with MongoDB. Now you can have your portfolio or your blog or whatever you want and, and get your users or your audience sending you message. It's really cool. 
there are a few improvements that we could do. For example, uh, when I'm here, I can send another message, clicking send message. But it's a bit confusing, you know? We don't know if the message has been sent because the page doesn't show any visual identifier that the message has been sent. Nevertheless, if I come to the uh, website, we are going to see that the message was sent. But if we don't show the user something like that tells them this message has been sent, the user is going to keep clicking on send message over and over, and, and then you're going to fill up your your database to, with the send message so let's improve those things so for that uh, what i would do there are like lots of improvements we could do but some basic improvements would be to uh, completely reset the form once that it has been sent and also delete this message has been sent after a few seconds right so we g give the user a bit of time to read that the message has been sent but then it gets reset reset and there are multiple ways of doing this. I'm just going to do it in a really simple way, in a faster way. So for that, I am going to add here a reference. So form ref, like this. So I'm going to define here the variable form ref. And I need to use the hood use ref. This, roof, uh, this hook is a React hook, so I import it from here, use ref. And now um, I'm getting the reference to this form. So I'm going to create a use effect. And I'm going to say if um, is message sent is true and we get this form ref, you know, we make sure that we get this reference first. If this is true, then this is just the cleanup function that we will actually need. Okay, so let's just remove this. I um, need to import it. And here um, I'm going to re reset the form. So form ref current dot reset this is complaining because this could be undefined so i'm gonna add a question mark and this is complaining for the types we will add the types in a second so we come here let's just reload and wait a second first i need to pass here the dependency so this use effect i want uh, this effect to uh, run when this dependency is message sent changes. So I'll just remove this for now. Send message and the form has been reset. Have reset. <laughs> okay, cool. But I also want to remove this message here because otherwise it looks a little bit weird, right? Uh, but to do that, I don't want to remove it straight away, otherwise the user won't see it. So I'm going to create, a, I'm going to add a timeout. So when you have timeout, you need a clip up, clean up function. So I'm going to put this back and um, I'm going to create a variable using the let timeout. And it's like this. And then here set timeout it's gonna have a fallback function and the time is gonna be one second so here uh, is i'm gonna wait a, a second and then this is gonna it's gonna set the set message sense to false I'm just going to move this up to here and in the cleanup, cleanup function, I'm going to call clear timeout and pass uh, the timeout. Save this. Let's just reload. Hello. Message has been sent. Uh, the form was reset and then the message, the test has this, the test disappear. Maybe it's a bit too fast, so let's add 2,000. And let's try it again. 
you doing? Message has been sent and now it disappeared. Cool. This is really good. Uh, and um, something else, actually, uh, maybe we could add a bit of a transition when the tab disappears. Maybe it shouldn't disappear straight away. We could add another timeout, but it's fine. By, it, it's good. it looks good. So uh, let's just solve these issues, these type issues. So first, this form ref, this should be an HTML form element. Uh, but there is a chance that this could be a defined. Maybe we could put this or null. And timeout. This is a node.js um, timeout. I think it is. Node.js.timeout. And yes, that's it. All the word needs. Oh, let me see. Null or undefined. Okay, so let me just remove this. Yeah, no. So we are going to have to specify undefined. Okay, so my audio is still working for some reason, but what I was doing here is I just removed that and in the undefined, I set it up as HTML form element or null and I set up the by default value as null. So if uh, while the DOM is rendering and we don't have the reference to the form, the value is null. Otherwise, once we have the reference, the value, the type would be HTML form, um, HTML element form. And then I just tested uh, one more time to see that everything was working and it was. And uh, now if we go to the database, we can see that uh, our new message, uh, let me just scroll to the bottom, was submitted. Yeah, this is really cool and really powerful. I think in <laughs> these tutorials took us less than 30 minutes, I'm not sure, but it's quite amazing that uh, we connecting our Next.js 13 application to MongoDB in less than 30 minutes. And now you can use this knowledge and for much bigger applications. And that's it for this tutorial. Together we're taking our portfolio up from a static JSON file, file to a breathing, living MongoDB database. Remember, coding isn't just about writing lines of code. It's about creating, innovating, and most important, learning and having fun. So pat yourself on the back because you made it to the end. If you found this content helpful, consider sharing it with your fellow coders. So hit that share button and like button and spread the coding.